Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Watercolor Wednesday. I'm Leslie Watkins. Today, I noticed in a corner of the garden that the columbines were blooming and they are just stunning. So let me give you a close up of, of one of these beautiful flowers. Not only are the flowers beautiful, but the leaves are really nice too. So you can see the lovely kind of, um, I don't know, almost like an ivy kind of a shape. Very pretty. And I thought what I would do is to show you right from the very beginning how to make a quick and easy very simple note card with just a few supplies. So I'm going to start off with my paper trimmer. And I have a piece of very vanilla cardstock, and this is the thick cardstock. So the first thing I want to do is to just make a score line down the center and that's just to just to make it easier to fold it so I get a nice crisp fold and this is at the four and a quarter mark and then I'm going to cut it in half and this is an eight and a half by an eleven standard sized piece of cardstock and so that will give me two standard sized note cards and they will fit perfectly in these medium envelopes which are also very vanilla. So it matches perfectly and this these are very fine quality papers. They have a really nice soft touch to them and the cardstock is heavy enough to use for all sorts of projects, whether it's note cards or boxes or any kind of 3D treat holder, whatever it is that you may like to make. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create a mat. And so I've selected a colored mat. This is called Night of Navy. And I'm just going to, I'm going to cut this down slightly smaller than the card base. So instead of four and a quarter, I'm going to, I'm going to cut this at four and five and a quarter. And that's going to give us a nice border all around like so. Now for my watercolor paper, I've got some hot press watercolor paper. This is 90 pounds, so it's very thin, which is fine because we're just doing a little painting today. So what I can do is I can use my mat as a guide and I can just hold this where I want it and then gently oops it shifted gently fold that back on itself and this is where your bone folder is very important because you don't want to rub your fingers on your paper ever because it causes the oils to transfer from your fingers onto your paper and over time that will turn yellow. So use your bone folder and then I'm just going to gently tear that away and the 
same thing here. So I'm just getting that even on three sides and then gently fold it back on itself. Give it a good burnish. And I'm going to do this several times. And what I'm doing here is I'm just breaking down the fibers in the paper to make sure that I get a nice clean tear. I'm just pulling that away. And I, and I always save these pieces for my sentiment. They make a great place to stamp your sentiment on. So I'm just going to put that aside for later. And now you can see I have a nice base for my painting. Now don't worry about any irregular edges, that's fine. The reason we tear the watercolor paper is so that it mimics the deckled edge, which you find on your, your uh, better quality watercolor papers. And, um, and so that's desirable. All right, so let's put this aside for now and let's start painting. So I have my watercolors this side here and I'm just using yellow, red, and blue. I've got a couple of brushes. This is a number seven and a number four. And what I was thinking about doing today was to do a simple kind of a watercolor where I use the, the brush, the shape of the brush to make strokes to mimic the shapes of the petals and the leaves. So kind of almost like a Chinese brush style painting, just to keep it very simple, not a lot of detail, but just letting the brush do all the work for me. I also have a paper towel handy to help blot any excess moisture from the brush. And I have a kitchen sponge a clean kitchen sponge. It's never been used. It's been rinsed well and it's slightly damp and that will also help to blot excess water from the brush. So I'm going to zoom you in so you can see better. And I'll select one of these beautiful flowers. go. So if we look closely at the flower, you can see that there's, there's quite a few petals here. So let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's 10 petals and they're this beautiful rich violet color. And then there are these sweet buds and this is a this is a single columbine, and I'll just for the difference I'll show you what the double columbine looks like. Actually, this is this is a single two, but you can but you can see the spurs on here more plainly. So if you look closely, you see these these little. Um, tubular or cone shape parts of the flower that that come out behind the blossom and then sort of curl around almost like a little miniature cornucopia okay but for for today I'm just I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to do this form of blossom that one. All right now um, what's a little bit hard to show is the is the form of the flower so if you see there there's a kind of a side view so the the flower faces 
down and out. You don't see it from above. And, um, and I think that's probably to help shield it from the rain so that the pollen is available for all of the pollinators. And this, this plant has quite a few pollinators. Bees, butterflies, moths, and hummingbirds are all pollinators for the, for the beautiful columbine. All right, so, so if I do something so simple, So if I just, if you just look at the shape of one petal, okay, so you can see it's, it's got a long tippy point at the outside edge and, and it's also pointed on the inner end. All right, so I'm going to make some shapes that look like that. And I'm just mixing up my red and my blue. I'm getting a nice rich blue violet but I don't want to go too dark too soon so I'm just going to dilute that down and keep it on the light side for the moment and I'm going to start with the outer tip and I'm just using the tip of my brush to get a long thin point and then I'm pressing down and then lifting again. All right. So I think you can see, let me get that petal again. Oh, there's this one. Oh, I could use that one. So you can see now that the, that the brush stroke alone is already imitating the shape of the petal. So that's a great thing to practice. So you can just practice doing a whole bunch of those things. I mean, you could fill a page with them. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a few more to create this kind of starry shape. And let it connect at the base of the flower. I can extend that up and keep going around. Now I want the flower to have a kind of a cup shape. So I'm going to, I'm going to put these petals in a, in perspective. So there, there are five petals. Now we counted, we counted ten earlier. So I can just indicate the back petals. I don't have to paint every single one. So for this, I'm just going to lighten up my mixture a little bit to let these go back. And I'll increase the darkness here a little bit. There we go. Just blend that. All right, and now I need a stem. So I'm going to use my smaller brush this time. And I'm going to take some yellow mixing that with blue to get this light pale yellowish green which is the stem color and I'm going to get this kind of a hook shape so here here is the stem coming up and then down and I'll just let that come down halfway down the paper and then for the leaves 
I'm still using this smaller brush. Now I'm making my green a little bit darker. And you see these upper leaves are a different shape. There's one, there's one long leaf and then two short ones. So I will do that. I'm going to put this down for a second so I can hold the paper. So here is one long leaf. Okay. And then a shorter one here. And a shorter one here. And let that come to a, a point. And now all I'm doing is I'm, I'm using the darker green and I'm just going to add a little bit of definition on some of these places. Like so. And there is a super simple little design that would look lovely on a note card. But just to take it a step further, now you don't have to, but I think I'd like to add a bud. So I'm going back to my yellow-green mixture, and let me show you what the bud looks like. You can see a couple of buds there. There's two more over on this side. Okay, but I'm just going to take a simple one like this one. I'm trying to get that in focus so that you can see it better. There you can see, I think you can see it pretty well right there. All right, so for that, I'm just going to take a couple of strokes to make the base of the bud which looks something like this. And then it has these kind of, um, actually that's not a bud, that's the beginning of a seed capsule, so that's, that's fine. So this is, a, this is a flower that's already gone by. So I'm just gonna add these stamens. And then it has this kind of a base, which is kind of a bead shape. And that's where the seeds will begin to form. And again, I'm going to imitate that kind of a hook shape and bring that right back down to there. And maybe I will find an actual bud. So here's a, here's a, a bud and I'll have this one coming down this way to give it a little balance. And this has these little curls, like so. And then it also has those spurs forming on this end. And that will connect to this stalk here, like so. And I see that there's a couple of tiny little, tiny little leaves here forming. You see those dark leaves? So I'll just indicate those as well. Just a simple stroke like that. And maybe one coming off in this direction. And there we go. So that is pretty much done. I could add a little uh, dark accent just to give it a little more definition here and there. And 
and that's our Columbine design. So let's get a sentiment. I have my Quiet Meadow stamp set handy here, and I like this thinking of you. That's always a nice sentiment to, to have for sending a card to somebody at the spur of the moment. So let me get that out. And I've got my black Memento ink. And this is that scrap paper that I tore off the bottom of the watercolor paper. So I'm just going to ink this up really well. I haven't used this pad for a while, so I hope it's got plenty of ink in it. Maybe I'll do a little test. Okay, that looks fine. So here we go. Get that on there. Give it a little press. I don't like the way that came out. I'm going to do the, I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. That's better. Okay. So now I'm just going to assemble the card. So let's see how this looks. Got my liquid glue. I'm going to run a bead around the perimeter. Get that straight dish. And now I'm, I'm just giving it a, a nice firm burnish to spread that glue so that I don't have any bumps. Same thing here. And that's how simple it is to make a beautiful handmade watercolor note card. Now I'm just going to give the sentiment a little bit of a curl for some dimension. I think I'll trim off a little of the excess, so I'm just going to tear that away gently. And the other thing that I can do is I can take my envelope and I can put a little decoration on the back of my envelope. So going back to this stamp set, and I think what I'll do is just use this spray of flowers here. Open this up. There we go. So there is a beautiful 
floral note ca card that's inspired by the beautiful spring flowers in the garden. Didn't take long to do. Just a few supplies. All of these supplies are available in my online store at dandeliancottagedesign.com and I will also be posting all of the supplies that I use today down below after the video is over. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you take the time to practice some of these brush strokes. Really, with just a very little bit of effort, you can create a beautiful floral design. It does not have to be perfect. You don't have to capture a perfect likeness. And it's really very easy to do. So thank you so much for joining me. Stay well, stay happy, stay creative. And I will see you next time.